pre-calc, this is uh, 2.4, day two. We should be able to finish this up. The first slide here kind of maybe goes towards maybe 15 and 16 that uh, you guys had to do in your homework for the fact that um, it doesn't give you a graph on this one. It gives you the table of values, a.k.a. the points. And then it just asks you to find the uh, average rate of change between certain time intervals. I'm not going to do all three of these because all three of them end up being the exact same thing as in process. The, the process here is basically gives you the outdoor temperatures observed by a science teacher or a science te uh, student sorry, on a spring day. So we can see that in the morning it starts off cooler. Actually, this could be almost be today if you think about it. Today it started, I think, in my car when I got here was about 41, 42. And I think it's only going to get up in the 60s today, right? So this very well could model for today. And so temperatures start at 8 a.m. Every hour he goes out there and measures the temperature all the way till 7 p.m. when he goes to bed. And it's 51 degrees. Okay? So it wants to know the average rate of change from 8 to 9, 1 to 3, and 4 to 7. Notice that they one's a one-hour interval, another one's a two-hour, and then a three-hour interval. So we're taking different intervals. Um, and obviously, I could take the interval from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. If I wanted to, the average rate of change would be different yet again, right? Basically, that's what this slide's trying to show. Which one do you guys want to do, A, B, or C? Uh, C. C, okay, let's do C. Part C, the biggest thing here is you need to recognize you need to find the points. So the points are 4 p.m. 64 and 7 p.m. 51. Now wait a minute. Can I just plug in 8 a.m. into this function or some kind as a point or 4 p.m.? Is that okay, or do I have to somehow change this because time is not easy because it rolls back to zero, right? Almost. It goes to 12, then all of a sudden, one, two, three, four. So I think we actually probably should fix that. How can I fix that? How can I fix the fact that four is smaller than eight? Or how can I distinct between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m.? And Or maybe even the fact that we may even go to 8 p.m. We got an 8 and another 8. That wouldn't be a function because it looks like I'm putting the same value in of 8 and 8 that go to two different values. That would necessarily wouldn't be good. That's the tricky part here. How, how can I make this work? Can you make one negative, maybe? Like make one negative? You could do it that way, I guess, right? We could say that noon is like at zero. But I like the idea, but why do we start at noon? When did he start taking time? Eight. Why don't we start it then? Why don't we say our day will start, our time will start at eight o'clock? So that means at actually at nine o'clock, what is it? How many hours have rolled by? So can I change it and set up a new x value that says that, or my time, or we say t value, could I say that time zero is 8 a.m.? Then all I have to do is go down the list and start counting by once. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. Nope, not 10 again. 11. So, does everybody kind of see that I have to kind of set up a set of points here? I need to have it so that I can start to compare and see that things will change. If I didn't, your numbers would be kind of a little all over the place. It's a progression here. Now, does that make more sense that at hour 8, we have 64 degrees at hour 11, you will have 51 degrees. I think we now can figure this out. Remember that this would be considered x, and this is considered f of x, or t, right? Time, maybe we should use t's. I'll use t's. 
because it doesn't really matter. Time, the function of time, f of t. And then, of course, I'm going to use the, the uh, formula for average rate of change. What was that average rate of change? f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Are we okay with that? What's f of b? What's that in our problem? It could be 64. Okay, we'll call that one 64. Then what's f of a? 51. Then what's b? 8 minus 11. Could you have done 51 minus 64 and then 11 minus 8? We could have. Guys, if the temperature is doing what from 4 to 7 o'clock? It's decreasing, so the average rate of change will be negative. You guys should have that ability to check yourself that way because the, hopefully our answer will be negative. What's 64 minus 51? 13 over negative 3. And so that means that we have an average rate of change of a negative 13 thirds. Or 4.3 degrees. 4.3 repeat. If we want to make it a little bit easier for us to kind of use the fact that every hour that means, every hour it dropped 4 and a third degrees. Okay? That's how we read this. That's how we can do this. Same process for parts A and B. The next one is a function of a constant with a constant rate of change. We know that f of x is equal to 3x minus 5 is a what? It's a line. So therefore, if I find the amount of change over the interval from 0 to 1, or the interval from 3 to 7, or from 10 to 20, the rate of change should always be the same. Think of the slope. It never changes, right? It's a constant. So we'll do part A, and then we'll do part C, just to show you that that still actually will come out to something that's constant. F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. We've wrote that down several times in this lesson. Now let's fill her in. What's B? What's F of B? What's B? Actually, what are we going to call B? One. One, okay. So that's B, that's A. What's three times one? Minus five. So we get negative two minus zero, which is negative five, all over one minus zero. Negative 2 plus 5, we all should know that. It goes pretty quick. And the average rate of change is 3. Wait a minute. That's in slope intercept form already. What was the slope? 3. What did we find? 3. Connections? Yes. What do you think is going to happen from 3 to 7? We're not going to do that one, but it will come out to 3. So let's see if we can do the same thing with part C, which is all variables, to find out if I still can come up with 3. You think we can have it will happen? We'll find out. So f of a plus h. Well, that's 3 times a plus h minus 5. I'll put that in a bigger set of brackets, minus um, 3a minus 5, all over what? a plus h minus a. Just filled it in, right? Using function notation, evaluating them for f of a plus h and f of a. 
Now we gotta start cleaning things up. I think all of us would understand the A's in the bottom would cancel each other out. That's nice. Um, on top, I probably should distribute the three, correct? So I get three A plus three H minus five. And then, can I get rid of the second brackets there too? What would that be then? Yeah, minus three A plus five all over. H, and we can definitely see some things are going to go away for us. Three A's go, fives go. Oh, sorry, I crossed the wrong off. Three A's go, and the fives go. So I'm left with three H over H, which ends up being three. So it doesn't matter what I put in, it went away ends up being three because the slope of that thing, no matter what two points you start with, is three. So obviously we've been talking about the conclusions we're finding here is that if it's a constant function, no matter what, the rate of change will be the same. Make sense? First of all, the slope is given to us right in the equation, slope-intercept form. One of the last things we'll talk about for this section is where are our graphs increasing and decreasing. Um, I think we should know that we're basically looking at graphs from left to right. And if it looks like it's going uphill, the graph is increasing. If it looks like it's going downhill, it's decreasing. They put a little bit more of a formal definition. As you can see, they call this x1 and then that point right there is f of x1, x2, f of x2, right? They're saying, guys, that if the function evaluated at x1 is less than the function evaluated for x2, which is further to the right, as you can see, or x1 is less than x2, then this function is increasing. That should make sense. And the further you walk away, the higher on the graph you go, well, then your graph is increasing. And it goes the other way, that if the point before you was taller than the point uh, after it, as we say down here, with the same idea that x1 is smaller than x2, then this would be decreasing. So if the value or the height of the graph is shorter than the one before it, your graph will be decreasing. Now, can graphs decrease and increase and then inc decrease again? Yes. Graphs can increase and decrease many times over many intervals on a graph. So are there any questions on that? So the question is, state the intervals on which the function whose graph is shown below, is increasing or decreasing. So for this, guys, I think it'd be best if you used interval notation. And I would just kind of list them. So you can go increasing. You can go decreasing. And you just list them. Starting from the left, work your way to the right. Here's a question. Where do they stop increasing and then start decreasing and vice versa? Where would a graph be that's not increasing or decreasing? What's that? A straight line. A straight line. Okay. Or where does that happen? At what points? Negative 4, 2. Guys, what happens at negative 4, 2? Where is it? It's at the top of a hill. Are you increasing or decreasing at the top of the hill? You're not doing anything. You have potential, right. What happens if you're at the bottom of 0, negative 2? You're stuck there at the bottom. There is no slope according to that point. It would be a flat. There is no increase or decrease. That is the point where I start to go back up. So, how can I state that this side right here, I am what? 
increasing. We'll, let's just assume that there are arrows at the ends of these graphs. So what would that interval look like? Remember, wait a minute, interval notation. Interval for what? The x's or the y's? Not both. Just the x's. Just the domain. What is the domain that would be that piece? What would it look like? And negative 4. What kind of brackets or parentheses are on this thing? Parentheses for sure on infinity because you can't be there. I'm thinking we still will say open because at 4, you're not increasing or decreasing. Because if that's the case, if you include negative 4 on the increasing side, what do I do when I go back to here and say, we know it's decreasing right here. Do we include it on that one too then? Yeah. I don't know. I say we don't include it. Decreasing, negative 4 to 0. Since we're in red here, it's also decreasing here, which would be what? Two to seven. And then the others are the increasing, yes? So we are going from zero to two and seven to infinity. Oh. All the black circles are the ones that are increasing, the red ones are the decreasing. And now the graph really looks weird. Does everybody kind of understand what it means to increase, decrease? This example is using a graph to find intervals where a function increases or decreasing. Um, they want you to graph this, which is x equals 2 thirds. And then they want you to state the, the domain and range of the function, and then state the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Okay, I'm going to pause it, we'll pull it up on Desmos. Okay, so in Desmos, this is what it kind of looks like. It kind of looks like a bird in flight there, maybe, yeah. Um, or kind of like a square root on both sides, right? So, let's just talk about it. What's the domain? Positive and negative infinity, right? All real numbers? Okay? Is it at 0, 0? I think the graph is supposed to be at 0, 0. Mine's just off a little bit. Um, what's the range? Domain would be all real numbers, right? Because I can go in both directions. It goes on forever. The range again, sorry? X is greater than 0. Y is greater than. Or equal to? Is it equal to 0? Check it. So y is greater than or equal to 0. Domain is all real numbers. And then find where it's increasing. Where is it decreasing? It's increasing from? Not all the way. Wait, wait, wait. What did you say the domain was? Right to left. Okay. X is greater than or? Yes, great. No, I guess we wouldn't say equal because it, that's where it's changing. So yes, x is greater than 0 because it's definitely getting larger over here. And then it's falling over here, right? So it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. zero. So from zero to infinity, not including zero or infinity, and then from negative infinity to zero. Any questions? I mean, basically, that's the same exact thing as we did on the other graph. It's just you guys had to graph it first. That's decreasing. Increasing is 0 to infinity. Um, if a function is increasing over an interval, then the average rate of change is positive. And if it's decreasing over an interval, it is negative. That's all I got for you guys. 
Guys, increasing because of positive slope. Decreasing because it has a negative slope. These are all things that, guys, you should be making your connections for. Day two homework is 19, 21, 23, 29, and 34. Have a great day.